Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4. My name's Camel and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show us how to acquire the unique 10mm pistol known as Wastelander's Friend. So acquiring it is nice and simple. All we need to do is come to Bunker Hill, which on the Pipway map can be found to the northeast of Diamond City. Once here we need to head to the store and find Deb in her rather loud mechanics jumpsuit. Once we find her, all we need to do is talk to her and click on Barter, then head across to Weapons and head down to the bottom of the list. Here will be Wastelander's friend, and as always the price of the weapon will vary depending on your character's current charisma level. As always, before looking at the weapon's base stats, I have reduced my character's special attribute stats to 1. I also have no bobblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the weapon. So in the first slot, I'm going to be making this an automatic weapon and going with a powerful automatic receiver. This of course makes the weapon automatic, increases the damage by 25%, increases the fire rate by 175%, reduces the range by 1 times and increases the VATS cost by 25%. Next we're going to be going with a long light ported barrel. This adds 5 times minimum range, adds 9 times maximum range, reduces sight spread by 10%, reduces minimum spread by 25%, reduces recoil by 25%, reduces VATS cost by 15% and reduces sight time by 3%. Then we're going to be adding the sharp shooter's grip. This reduces spread by 15%, reduces recoil by 15%, reduces VATS cost by 15% and increases bash damage by 50%. Now we're going to be going with the large quick E Eject mag. This increases the magazine size to 24, reduces reload time by 20% and increases sight time by 3%. Now you could add the recon scope if you want to do some long range shots, but I find it much more practical if we add just the reflex sight so we can still aim down sight. And as always your choice, you can go with the reflex sight with the dot or the reflex sight with a circle, which is the one I'm going with, the circle. My choice is very well rounded. <laughs> this adds 1.5 times zoom, reduces sight spread by 15%, reduces VATS cost by 15% and reduces sight time by 10%. And finally, I'm going to be going with a muzzle brake. You could very easily go with the suppressor if you so wish to use this as a stealthy weapon. But personally, I love the sound of an unsuppressed 10mm pistol. Automatic pistol anyway. So I'm going to be going with a muzzle brake. This reduces minimum range by 0.75 times and reduces maximum range by 1.5 times. It also very usefully and thankfully reduces the recoil by 20%. So once it has been modded out the way I just did, it has a base ballistic damage of 22. It uses the 10mm rounds as ammunition. It has a fire rate of 120. Its range is 89, its accuracy is 76, its weight is 6.4 pounds, and its value is 809 caps. And as we can see up the top there, Wastelander's Friend, plus 50% limb damage. So Wastelander's Friend is a unique 10mm pistol, which as we have learned, can be modded into a 10mm automatic pistol. I don't know if that changes the name to an Uzi or a SMG, but whatever it does turn into, it is very fun. Also, I do believe that Wastelander's Friend is the only unique 10mm pistol in the entire game. It also bears the crippling legendary effect, which as we know inflicts 50% more limb damage against enemies. This crippling legendary prefix, combined with an automatic version of Wastelander's Friend, is an excellent way to slow down enemies or to disarm them, of course doing so by shooting their legs or arms. A wave of furious 10mm bullets perforating your foe's extremities, leaving them in a situation in which they are not fit to fight you any longer. Then all you need to do is aim it at the head and take your time. Now as we know it had a base ballistic damage of 22, but after getting all the appropriate perks, I was able to get its damage up to 63. Now for an automatic pistol with 25 rounds in its magazine, each bullet now doing a damage of 63, that's a pretty good place to start off. And of course if we add sneaking attacks and critical hits and things like this, you can get some pretty decent damage out of this. Uh, if you do want to sneak with it, I would of course suggest putting the suppressor on it. This will reduce the range a little bit more, but it will also help with the recoil a little bit more. And of course you are now silenced so you can sneak around and stay sneaked while still shooting enemies for a little bit longer. But for me, at least in this video, I just love the sound of an unsuppressed Wastelander's friend too much to add the suppressor onto it. But back to the suppressor and sneaking, if you do do a sneaking shot with this and you have the ninja perk maxed out, you're going to be doing 3.5 times damage. That means each bullet's going to be doing around 211 damage. And of course, three bullets come out during a VATS hit. So with one VATS hit execution, you're going to be shooting three bullets doing 211 damage each, all up going to do 633 damage, which isn't insane, but it's definitely not average. That's pretty damn good. Then of course, it's got a magazine size of 24, so you've got plenty more. It's really cheap to use in VATS, so you can even do more hits, doing exactly 
did the same thing. If you want to execute a critical hit, you're going to be doing 2.5 times damage, combine that with the sneaking damage. You're going to pretty much wreck your enemy and in a very cheap way, as it still only uses the 10 millimeter rounds as ammunition. Probably one of the most common ammunition types in the entirety of Fallout 4. So it's cheap, it's light, it's versatile, it's automatic, got a fairly decent magazine size. The range is okay, fire rate's pretty nuts. Again, if you want, chuck the suppressor on it, sneak around a little bit more. And of course, then on top of all this, we have the limb damage, the 50% increased limb damage. Again, cripple your enemy's legs, make them walk slower, make it so they can't run away, cripple their arms so they drop their weapons and they can't find you. Then all they can do there is stand there in pain and they are yours for the taking. So I don't really want to jump the gun, but all in all, I would say the Wastelander's Friend is an excellent choice of weapon. It's also incredibly easy to get. You can get this at any point in the game, all you need to do is literally walk to Bunker Hill and it's all yours. Provided you got the cash for it. So the Wastelander's friend, Mad Max's friend. You know whose friend it isn't? Anyone you shoot with it. <laughs> oh. If there's any late night programs that are looking for a new writer, give me a buzz. Just going out on a limb, or a just going out on a 50% extra limb damage, but I would say that this gun is the friend of someone who disposes too much land. And here it is, Australia's mining corporation's friend, the Wastelander's friend in action. And there you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel and this has been my weapon guide for the unique 10mm pistol known as Wastelander's Friend. I do hope that this video helped you out in some way. If it did, I think you will be very interested in clicking on the playlist button on screen. This of course will take you directly to my Fallout 4 Guides playlist where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 Guides that I upload. If you consider yourself a Wastelander, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. The link can also be found in the description. Or you can search Camelworks on Twitter. And with all that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.